Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Nicole Vignola Show. I make it my mission to explain the brain so that life can feel a little bit less scary. Today I want to talk about why it is that we crave the things that hurt us. If you have been in that situation where you want something yet you know it is not good for you, maybe it's going back to a toxic ex, maybe it's continuing that bad cycle of that bad habit that's destroying you, maybe it's a self-sabotage, maybe it's something simple as doom scrolling every single night even though you know you should be going to bed, or maybe it's something more serious like an addiction. I want you to know that it's not about willpower. I'm going to explain to you what is going on in your brain so that you can take control of the situation, you can take control of your urges, so you can stop craving the thing that is hurting you. What I want to explain to you today is that the brain has two distinct pathways for wanting and liking, which means that you can want something without actually liking the outcome of it. And what happens is the wanting part actually overrides the liking part, and you'll know that because once you've sent that text, once you go back to your ex, once you end up doing the habit that you're not supposed to be doing, you don't feel very good about yourself. You don't actually enjoy what it brings. So by the end of today's video, you're going to have a whole new lease on life because you're going to be able to understand what is going on in your brain, which in itself is empowering. And you're also going to understand how to control these things so that they no longer control you. As I already alluded to, the wanting part and the liking part of your brain follow two very distinct pathways. And it is the reason why we crave things that don't actually make us happy. So I'm gonna break it down. So the wanting part is essentially your dopamine system, your reward system that puts you in pursuit of attaining the reward, attaining the thing that you think is going to bring you joy. The problem here is that that mesolimbic pathway that is responsible for putting you in motivation drive can actually override the liking part. And so once you're in pursuit of that goal or you're in pursuit of that thing that's hurting you, it can feel like it's overpowering everything. What's essentially happening is the ventral tegmental area releases dopamine and it releases dopamine into the nucleus accumbens. The nucleus accumbens and the ventral tegmental area both work together to provide wanting, craving, desire. It doesn't really care whether something is good for you or not. It's just concerned with pursuit, pursuit of potential reward. So an example is that intoxicating feeling of waiting for somebody to respond and then they do, especially if they've been ignoring you, that's dopamine. Or the deep craving to text somebody that you're not supposed to text. Again, that's dopamine. The deep urge to go and eat more cookies even though you are completely stuffed dopamine, the urge to go and smoke a cigarette even though you said you were going to quit, that is dopamine. Liking, on the other hand, is actually related to the opioid system. And you're probably thinking, what? <laughs> opioids are not good for us. Yes, but endogenous opioids, so endocannabinoids, which are endogenous opioids, actually give us that feeling of pleasure and relaxation and contentment joy with life. So this is essentially your pleasure system. It releases endocannabinoids, which are endorphins and enkephalins, which essentially make us feel really good. And this opioid system is essentially responsible for hedonic pleasure, the actual experience of enjoyment, comfort, satisfaction in life. So I'll briefly go into some neuroscience just because I don't think many people talk about the opioid system, but essentially you've got three opioid receptors. You've got the mu receptors, you've got delta receptors, and then you've got the kappa opioid receptors. You've got three different types of receptors. Now your mu receptors are essentially your primary receptors. They are the key mediators of pleasure and reward and they are densely located in three areas of the brain. The ventral palladium, the orbitofrontal cortex and the nucleus accumbens as well. The nucleus accumbens is essentially where pleasure is felt once these opioid receptors are saturated with endocannabinoids. The orbitofrontal cortex that is responsible for the logical part of the brain essentially helps you attach those features feelings of understanding what is pleasurable. So it helps you essentially process a subjective feeling of pleasure so that you can understand what makes you feel good. And then the ventral palladium is responsible for amplifying these signals in the brain and body. When those key areas of the brain are saturated with endogenous opioids, it essentially leaves you with that feeling of euphoria and well-being. Unlike dopamine, which mediates the wanting part, opioids essentially mediate the liking and the enjoying part of the experience. And so initially these two systems do 
work together because of course you can like something and want it and they can work together to give you that pleasurable feeling. It doesn't necessarily always mean that wanting something leads to a negative outcome, especially with something new like maybe falling in love or experiencing a new experience like going to a concert. You can want it and like it and these two systems work synergistically to provide you with that feeling of feeling good and euphoria and excitement etc. The problem is is that they don't always work together and this is where we end up in situations where we start craving the things that hurt us and this is because with repeated exposure the opioid receptor or the opioid system essentially adjusts it becomes desensitized it basically adapts meaning that you begin to get less pleasure from the experience versus if you were experiencing it for the first time ever now the other problem is that dopamine continues to fire regardless of the enjoyment being depleted so what happens over time is that the brain down regulates these opioid receptors pleasure fades but dopamine remains and this can manifest itself in toxic relationships and addiction predominantly so how do we get hooked on the things that hurt us is that dopamine is not responsible for pleasure it's responsible for the pursuit of pleasure and reinforcing the pattern of pursuit and so for example the first time you experience a relationship that is maybe toxic you might find that exciting but over time the pleasurable part the liking part will fade away and you'll start to see the red flags yet your brain is hooked on that feeling of getting some sort of potential reward because there's still some level of reward there but it's in a different format because maybe it's an intermittent reinforcement of this person promising you that they will never do it again and so dopamine is abundant because it knows that there may or may not be a potential outcome that is favorable to you so I wouldn't be Nicole's neuroscience if I didn't leave you with some actionable tools on how to break the cycle rewire break the cycle alter your thoughts create lasting change so i'm going to teach you how to break the cycle of this wanting and craving something that is hurting you even though it no longer brings you joy so the first step is you want to try and reduce your dopamine triggers anything that's going to cue you to put you in pursuit of reward of this particular activity so for example you may need to block your ex you may need to unfollow things that maybe remind you of this person if you're dealing with junk food addictions and you probably want to remove them from your house as an example and then the other thing that's really helpful is changing your routine when you change your routine dopamine is now learning that it can do something new and so changing those triggers those subconscious triggers that remind you to do something because oftentimes we operate from a place of subconscious cues and triggers you reach for your phone without thinking about it you often text your ex in an automatic way it's kind of like this inability to control your behaviors but you absolutely have more control than you think you do step number two is to rebuild your opioid system to have more joy and pleasure from things and you can do that through exercise exercise is one of the best ways to restore endocannabinoids in the body it is essentially your body's way of releasing cbd you know there was a whole cbd hype a few years ago you can get cbd from exercise when you run when you exercise when you lift things, your body releases CBD into your own endogenous cannabinoid system to leave you with those feelings of euphoria. Deep social connection is another way that you can increase this opioid system. So by engaging in really thoughtful conversations with friends, maybe hugging it out, but again, it needs to feel like it's warm, like it's somebody that's really there to hold space for you. You can't just go around hugging random people. It needs to be a real hug, maybe from a best friend, maybe from somebody that you haven't seen in a long time, or you need to stand there in that hug for at least 10 seconds. Hug your friends, for a longer period of time than just saying hello. Give them a nice hug, breathe into it. That will help you release the right chemicals in your brain and body, oxytocin, endorphins, to all just make you feel good and reinstate this balance in the system. And number three is I want you to add something positive to the end of this chain of sequences of events. So what that means is you're turning the negative craving into something positive. So what I want you to do is every time you get that craving to text the person, to eat the cookie again guys there's nothing wrong with cookies I'm a big proponent believer of eating cookies 
but we all know that when you're snacking cookies at 11, 12 o'clock at night and you're binging on them, there is a clear difference between that and eating the cookie because you actually want to enjoy it. So please, it has got to do with binge eating the cookie binge eating food when you get that urge to want to smoke the cigarette eat the extra cookie text the x i want you to add on something positive to the end of that sequence of events so eventually what will happen is that that craving will remind you to do something good for yourself now that good for yourself activity could be taking a big breath drinking a glass of water journaling reminding yourself of a mantra maybe you have a statement that helps you feel grounded because even if you then end up doing the thing that you're not supposed to be doing instead of berating yourself i would like you to add that positive habit at the end of it because eventually what will happen is that that sequence of events will trigger you to do the positive thing in the end because you'll remember you'll say actually i've got this craving but i know that at the end of this whole series of unfortunate events something positive comes along so now you've turned that negative into positive in an ideal world you would skip all of that and you wouldn't actually text your ex you wouldn't actually smoke that extra cigarette but if you do do not berate yourself which brings me to my last point point number four how many times have you berated yourself for the thing that you were not supposed to do and how many times did it actually change the behavior none because if you did you wouldn't have bad habits you wouldn't have these urges because you'd just be able to beat yourself up about it and then you would regain control of the situation berating yourself does not work you need to congratulate yourself for the small wins because berating yourself keeps you stuck in a loop. What your brain learns is that you can berate yourself about it later. It doesn't matter if you do it. You will be able to gain control of the situation later by beating yourself up about it because ultimately what it all comes down to is a form of control. And if we know that we can control ourselves later by beating ourselves up, then we end up staying stuck and repeating the same patterns of craving that send us into a loop of wanting the thing that hurts us. Stop berating yourself and start congratulating yourself for the small wins. Every little win. So today you didn't text that person back give yourself a big tick. Today you didn't think about them as many times, give yourself a tick. Today you smoked one cigarette instead of five, give yourself a big tick because what your brain is gonna try and tell you is gonna say, hey, but you're still smoking. You said you wanna smoke at all and you're still smoking. And then you beat yourself up and then you end up smoking five cigarettes again the day after because you couldn't control how you felt in that moment. If you congratulate yourself, well done, you only smoked one. It's not great, but it's fine, but we're moving in the right direction then your brain is going to learn that there's a positive reinforcement there in itself and that the thing that you're doing is actually positive and that in itself will release dopamine and make you feel good and make you want to continue on this pursuit of choosing better outcomes for yourself. So your biggest takeaway is that just because you want something, it doesn't necessarily mean that you like it. And it just means that your dopamine system is concerned with attaining that thing regardless of the outcome. By understanding this, this is the first step in being able to break the cycle. Because when we have knowledge, we have understanding, we have power. We have the ability to take control of the situation. Your brain is powerful, but it is also super programmable. We have the ability to make plastic changes well into old age. So if you feel like you've been repeating the cycle over and over again, now that you've watched this video, I hope that you can see that you are actually in a strong position in being able to help yourself and change these patterns. You absolutely can can. So the next time you feel this intense urge to chase the thing that is hurting you, I want you to take a pause, take a breath and ask yourself, do I really enjoy this or am I just addicted to chasing it? That question alone will start rewiring your brain to help you make better choices in the future. And it will, even if not right now, even if you do make a mistake and you end up choosing the thing that is hurting you, over time, if you stick to these steps and you stick to this video, it will absolutely rewire your brain. Guys, I hope you found this helpful. I would love it if you could please like, comment, subscribe. We're going to the stratosphere and beyond with this channel, my Rewire Collective. Your support means the world to me. So thank you so much for being here. As always, please drop your questions in the comment sections and let me know if you need any additional help. It's me, Nick, your pocket neuroscientist, and I've made it my mission to explain the brain so that life can feel a little bit less scary.